Hi and welcome everyone to an Azure video from our Azure Stack Hub Partner Solution video series. Uh, again, I'm joined today by Tiberi Radu from the Azure Stack or Intelligent Edge team and he brought a very special guest today. So Tiberi, who am I going to speak to today? Hello, Thomas. Hello, everyone. Um, as we've seen throughout the series, we have uh, with Azure Stack Hub, we have a number of uh, partners, um, um, starting with uh, uh, CSPs um, uh, that offer less complex services, so like hosting services, all the way to uh, more uh, um, complex offerings, including managed service providers and um, uh, CSPs that actually partner with uh, ISVs to deliver a, a full-blown solution to, to their customers. Um, today, we're going to meet with uh, Dino Bordonaro from uh, Bordonaro IT. Um, he is one of our MVPs, and he uh, leads a team that offers a range of services to their customers. Uh, we've already met them in a previous video with uh, KPARC. Um, but today we wanted to, to go deeper into what they offer um, and uh, the types of services that they offer because these range from uh, less complex um, uh, services like uh, having a, a hosted environment, a co-located environment, all the way to uh, providing um, managed uh, services to, to their customers um, and creating these solutions on, on, on top of uh, uh, Azure Stack Hub. Uh, they are also one of our Azure Stack uh, insiders, uh, meaning that they deploy the updates uh, as soon as they come out and they validate these updates for uh, the rest of our uh, partners and, and customers. Um, as well as um, they have, uh, Dino has built uh, this uh, center of excellence uh, where we um, uh, are able to validate solutions and we're able to have ISVs and partners actually validate their solution um, so that they can build these uh, uh, VOCs and demos and whatever is needed for, for customers to, to realize um, um, how, how their solution could, could actually look like. Um, I'll let Dino go deeper into details on this. Um, I'm sure you, you guys will have a great talk. Yeah, that sounds great. I met Dino very early on in the process, so I'm sure it's definitely going to be an interesting talk we're going to have. So welcome, Dino. It's uh, great to have you on the show. We know each other from many, many early projects with Azure Stack and Azure Stack Hub uh, and the MVP Summit and a lot of different kind of like projects as well as community activities. Uh, but for those who don't know you, can you introduce yourself and your company a little bit? Hello, Thomas. Thank you for having me here. So hello everyone, my name is Dino Bordonaro, owner of Bordonaro IT in Germany and early adopter of Microsoft Azure Stack, now these days called Hub. Um, I'm very proud of um, to be part of the SI program and one of the first round of five partners of the preferred SI on Azure Stack Hub and working with my team 24 seven for customers around the globe, operating um, and providing managed services for Azure Stack Hub and around Azure Stack Hub. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I'm located in Speyer, which is 100 kilometers away from Frankfurt, just to have a regional location. And um, my speciality with the company is just Azure Stack Hub. From 1st January this year, we focused on this only product and with the Azure hybrid part around it and got rid of everything we did before. And right now um, we are on a, a very fast track on transforming our data center, which we also run for customers directly to Azure Stack Hub. For this, we also own free Azure Stacks in our data center. And right now we are, since a couple of months, on the on the track of lifting and shifting our Hyper-V workloads to Azure Stack Hub and future. Then I hope in latest at latest two months, we are Azure Stack Hub only in our company. That sounds pretty exciting. So um, I see you do a lot of different kind of like work uh, around not just Azure Stack Hub, but also like Azure Hybrid, right? Uh, you do a lot of like also consulting and managing and operations. So can you explain a little bit more on what you're doing for these different customers and who your different customers are? It depends. I mean, um, from one customer perspective, Basically, we do the consulting, which is in very early stage when they try to find a solution on the edge and we come in because they heard Azure Stack Hub could fit. 
So we are brought in from the OEMs or from Microsoft side and um, help the customer find the best solution for his needs. So this is the basic consultancy piece of the product. And then um, we do also the, the installation for some OEMs as well as the operator as a service. So if a customer just wants to have an on-premises cloud platform, they just have us on their side to operate the, the, the operator as a service. So they can just use the cloud, but they don't have to build and run the cloud. We take care about this, and this is what we focus on and, in, and what we are really good in. And the cool thing is, as Azure Stack Hub is a cloud platform with all the RBAC system that public Azure also has, as well as the control system like Azure Monitor and all around it, it's very cool to be operated on an Azure Stack Hub platform because normally you don't even have the chance to, to touch or get into a customer tenant workspace and get access to the data, at least until the customer um, opens a subscription and gives you rights like in public Azure. So it's very cool on Azure Stack Hub to give away the operator role, but in a secure way so that everyone knows we can only access the tenant, uh, the, the operator role um, features like the admin portal and patch and update and do all these things around it. But at no point of time, we can access tenant workloads, which would be a security breach of, in most cases. So Azure Stack Hub is perfect for us to be the platform of the customer's choice and then we just run it for the customer, monitor it, operate it, extend it, whatever the customer wants. We take away the pain from infrastructure and the customer just uses the cloud uh, compared with the OEM builds the bus. We drive and maintain the bus and the customer just needs to put people in the bus. That is actually a pretty cool um, explanation of how you do your services and which parts you're taking care of and how you're supporting the OEM as well as the customers. Uh, I also know that you do a lot of things on hybrid, right? You're not just using Azure Stack uh, Hub as an isolated system. You also help your customers using hybrid services and bringing Azure services in. 100% correct. So we need to find out what the customer from a security perspective can use. So we also have the hybrid journey that we, for some customers, we also have tenant workloads with, with Azure Apache and update management with log analytics, with uh, um, change tracking and all these features. If the customer is allowed to use it in a public cloud, we, we are happy to use it because I think it's the best of this cloud journey to have the on-premises cloud and attach it with real cool cloud service from public Azure. So this is uh, the one part. And the other part is at the end um, that the, the customer, it's brainless for him because even if a disk breaks, a memory module breaks, whatever, we also take the communication to the OEM and, and coordinate the, the service technician that comes on site. Um, then we have to do our work as an operator to, for example, drain a node and shut it down so that the technician can take the server out from a hardware perspective, change the broken part, put it in. We, we retest the platform, do our test Azure Stack stuff, document the whole stuff, and then give the customer from an idle perspective the, 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 the summary of what happened. And, and that, in most cases, that's the only time the customer hears of us. First time we tell him something is broken and then we tell him it's fixed again. And if everything went fine, which is most of the cases, um, then he didn't even feel the impact. So that's perfectly for both sides. We have on our end recurring money with managed services and the customer just have to trust in us, focus with their people on providing services on the platform and just use it. Okay, that is actually pretty cool. I, I love how you are taking care of like, abstracting the Azure Stack operating um, model, if you will, and the task an Azure Stack operator needs to do from the customer and for the customer. And then the customer can just use it as another cloud platform, right? Um, so if we look at the customer who actually like extending their hybrid journey, they're like using Azure and they're using Azure Stack Hub, what are kind of like the reasons for our customers um, to leverage Azure Stack Hub and why do they want Azure Stack Hub? So most of the time it's data sovereignty. Customers want to keep the data or must keep the data in their building or even their data center. It's um, sometimes even a, from a product standpoint, they have a, as an ISV, they have a, a certified solution. And part of the certified solution is to run it in their certified data center themselves. And they just choose the platform and we, we take the best of both worlds. So we take what we can from public cloud, combine it with the private cloud, but at a lot of cases now in these days, like IoT, for example, latency matters. So if you have a production plan and, and you're really counting production cycles in nanoseconds or, or milliseconds, you don't have the time to transfer the data to cloud, process it, 
and then bring the data back. So because, for example, machine is moving at this time or um, some products are made. So for this, for this case, it's very important to have the data processed on site in a very fast way. So imagine you're on a Formula One team, for example. It's a, I know Azure Stack Hub is not running there, but just as a comparison, when the car drives with 300 or 350 miles per hour or, or kilometers per hour, they need to have the data in this second, they look on the screen or not one or two seconds later, because if they decide it wrong, they break the whole engine and the car breaks down. And this is how I see it. So for data sovereignty, compliance, and for latency, most people choose Azure Stack Hub. And the cool thing about this is when they choose this track on, prem on premises and combine it with Azure, they even have the doors open for some service like their websites or, or uncritical services to even run them on Azure. But from a process standpoint in the background, like they de define their services and their, their incidents and their change requests, they can run it completely as one. So, so running or installing a software from a CSV pipeline in Azure Stack Hub, as well as Azure, most of the time just targets different APIs, but it's just a different connection JSON file that you use, but the deployment process itself, it's the same, it's unified. So it's very easy for one cloud team and the customer to run public cloud and Azure Stack Hub with the same set of people in the same teams and all hyper-converged and software defined, which makes it much easier to work as a team instead of as silos like firewall storage, whatever. And that makes it very agile and fast to work with these cloud technologies and processes compared to the earlier days, standard hardware silo thing of doing uh, business. Yeah, these are some great use cases. Uh, I love how you address these different things like data sovereignty, latency issues, but also modernization of applications, right? To actually uh, give people that cloud platform, that consistency with public Azure so they can just use it at itself, but also combine it with a hybrid cloud uh, environment. Now, what is very interesting and I want I want to know more about is uh, the COE. So TB mentioned in the beginning that you're part of the COE. Um, can you tell me and our viewers a little bit more about it and what it is and how you're part of that? So um, the, the COE is a brainchild of, of TB, of Kenny, Kenny Law from Dell EMC and me. And it was about, um, let's, let's say it like this, we see projects where there could be a better result if the people would choose the right hardware or the right tooling or right technologies. And we thought we can do it better. But to prove this, we needed to have the, the hardware on premises, like in our data center, and then go to the customer and say, okay, here's the perfect platform. It's the latest, greatest, the best you can get for money. And this is what we want to give you as a POC, as a proof of concept platform, to put your workloads on, and then we can do benchmarking, testing, and whatever, and decide which one, which which size fits for you. So we take the approach from this is all we have, but maybe this is more than you need, and we help the customer decide um, what he needs. So just from a from a standpoint, better have the power, and then find out you don't need that much. Then then you try to test something, and you think, oh no, the platform doesn't fit because it doesn't have the power to run my workloads, just because. You're testing on, let's say, on a hybrid low setup of, a, of an OEM. And for the people who don't know it, for Azure Stack, we have this hybrid setup. Hybrid is not from the connection mode. Hybrid is um, spinning uh, rotating disks combined with NVMEs or SSDs as a performance booster compared to all flash, which by name is just flash storage. And it's much faster from a, from a latency perspective, as well as from, from the IOPS that come out of the system. So at the end of the day, we have all flash systems there in a large configuration powered by Dell Technologies, who also made this happen together with Kenny and his teams, as well as in Germany and in the USA. And we're very proud to, ru to run today one of the eight node all flash large configurations in our data center, which is publicly connected for a use case in a customer direction, so the customer can come to us, get a subscription, do a proof of concept, but also from a validation as a service perspective. Imagine you're a software vendor and, and you want to bring your solution to Azure Stack and you have no idea. So you get someone from a consultancy side like, like me or my team to help you um, on a fast track program, let's say it like this, 
to bring your workloads in an ARM world to, to automate deployments, as well as test them with the goal to bring them to the Azure Stack Marketplace or Azure Stack Hub Marketplace to get a certified ISV solution. So I just mentioned we are SI partner, program partner, or prefab partner in SI program. There's also an ISV program for the software partners. And this is the right choice if they want to bring their solution certified to the marketplace. And then customers just can go to the Azure Stack admin portal and say, add from Azure. They see all these cool solutions in there and can just edit and the customers can use it. And that's what the COE is about. We just want to show what is the maximum that is possible combined with cool people who burn for the pro, uh, for the for the, uh, the hardware and the system. And we have Microsoft in the boat. We have Dell in the boat as well as us on the boat. And we can give the, the, the customer or the ISV the best experience and, and helping hand to certify their solutions and help them get issues fixed and even bring issues to engineering and help them if there's some, some need on a networking layer, for example, or storage or whatever, and, and can bring all the pieces together to make it happen. Yeah, that is actually pretty cool. I mean, I remember that from doing many, many Azure Stack Hub POCs and working with customers that it's good to have like an overview about um, what you actually can do with it, hardware side, but also software side. And there's one more thing, and I always wanted to say this sentence, even if I'm not Steve Jobs, we are bringing it further. So we are just in the, in the part of integrating third parties. So we bring Cloud Assert, for example, even to the COE and show the customer with their hybrid platform how billing can be handled and how a service catalog can be can be added to, to provision services in a workflow perspective. Like from ITIL, you want to change, then you, you get an email to a responsible person. They have to acknowledge for the new VM and we can make this whole workflow thing as well as billing visible to the customer, but as well Dell EMC or Dell Technologies is adding their backup product. So we now get a, an Isilon even in there with the custom resource provider, which is added to Azure Stack and customers can consume on Azure Stack Hub backup with Networker backup, which is a super cool new product brought to Azure Stack Hub from Dell Technologies. So that a customer can use it like in a way from, from Azure backup, they just go to the portal and say add backup from from the side panel of the menu and then choose i want to pick up a subscription by tags by vms and then just click together their backup plan and hit submit and the backup is done nothing it's complete brainless like on public azure but brought by dell technologies to azure stack hub and this is what i love to have these third parties now coming together and help us build a full powered solution even with an ecosystem around it and not a standalone azure stack hub which is just sitting there alone it's great to see all these partners coming together and bring all their knowledge together to build that solution for our customers. Now, thank you very much for that interview. So Dino, if people want to know more about you and your company and your services you're offering, where can they find more about you? They can just visit our homepage, www.bordonarrow-it.com. They can find us under Azure Stack Alliance when they Google for it or Azure Stack-Alliance.com, which is our partnership with Tech Networks, our uh, Azure Stack Hub day one partner, which we provide these services uh, for Azure Stack Hub operators and tenant workloads. So we have a, we have together, together a, a network operation center and as well as very uh, soon starting my blog, which is dino.blog and also on Twitter, on LinkedIn and everywhere else. Um, I guess my handle is always at dino underscore Bordonero. Just find me, click me. I'm always happy to help and chat to people and, and help making cool projects happen. Awesome. Uh, so if you want to know more about Dino, check out the links in the description of this video. Uh, we put all for you together. With that, I want to say thank you, Dino. Thank you, Tibi. And thank you for all who are watching this video. And hopefully see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Thank you, Thomas, for having me here. Thank you, Tibi. Take care. Bye.